I, Ben Trogett, am a straight, white, non-religious, 14-year-old boy with dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, big ears, who is short for his age. That's an odd way to start a speech. But those are the labels that society places on me. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Who is this dramatic, self-pitying kid standing up at the front who's going to lecture us about how society has somehow wronged him? Well, those labels aren't bad or oppressive, but they are labels nonetheless. The theme for these TED Talks are living a life of purpose. Now, to me, that can mean one of two things. Living a life for a purpose or living a life with a purpose. At the beginning of every term, our class sits down and writes out goals that we have and the actions that we are going to take to achieve them. To live a life for a purpose means to live every day knowing exactly what you're going to do to achieve your goals. You shape your life, your careers, your relationships, your hobbies and passions around achieving these goals. To live a life with a purpose is a little different. Living a life with a purpose means not necessarily knowing exactly what you're going to do to achieve your goals, but knowing that whenever a decision has to be made, that it will be made in service of your goals and it will have a purpose. Now, I believe that either too much of these lifestyles is not good and there needs to be a balance between them. There is no right answer and I'm not here to tell you how you should live your life. I am going to tell you, however, that living a life of purpose means setting a goal for yourself and sticking with it until you achieve it. Usually a good, meaningful goal is not something you can just decide. Usually it's something that you receive after experiencing events that compel you to take action or communicate about your thoughts. And it can be as complex as brain surgery or as simple as sharing your ideas. And that's what I'm going to do today. Now, going back to what I said before about labels, my purpose for today and my goals for today are something I've been thinking about for a long time, and it was actually put into place in my hockey room dressing room. Now, this is a blanket statement, but coming from a 14-year-old boy, most 14-year-old boys, myself included, lack a certain filter from the brain to the mouth. Most jokes have a racial, or you name it, slur in it, and that's something, unfortunately, that one has to get used to. But when the joke started being about the Holocaust and the absolute horror and misery of the Jewish people and analogizing them with smoke in reference to the gas chambers in the concentration camps, or when the line between insensitivity and downright bigotry is crossed, that is when it becomes completely inappropriate and unacceptable. It got to the point where you could predict any conversation, any joke, like one of those Mad Libs cards. Insert cuss word here. Insert homophobic slur here. Insert racial or otherwise insensitive stereotype here. And I'm not kidding or over-exaggerating. And I, I will not stand here and pretend to be naive. I know that it is not just happening here. It is happening everywhere. And it is happening because of labels. And right now, my purpose is to share and advocate for my thoughts about labels. When I talk about labels, I'm talking about social labels. Social labels are more of a metaphor and used as a method of distinction between one person and the next. They sound fine when simply spoken. Calling someone white or calling someone black isn't going to cause them to cringe and break down in despair. But it's actually the very existence of these labels that encourage the stereotypes and then the language, and then the jokes, and then the opinions, and then the judgments. Let's break that down and listen to that again. It's the labels that encourage the judgments. If you are going to take anything away from this talk, it's that, and believe me when I say it, it is the very labels that we create that are the sources of all judgment. Let's think about that for a second. The only reason we have abstracts like racism, sexism, homophobia is because we created this technique of differentiating two already obviously different people. Yet we still felt that we needed some sort of word of confirmation to say, yes, that man's skin is black, or yes, she is attracted to women. After being compelled by my experiences, we started a project in art class where we made zines. Who knows what a zine is? 
Well, zines are these, or short for magazines, are these little booklets that you make with collages of pictures, words, and drawings to share humor, thoughts, or otherwise profound or comedic messages. And I thought this was the perfect way to share my thoughts about social labels. And in response to my zine, one of my teachers sent me a video of a crowded street on Valentine's Day. In the street, there was a huge display set up that was an x-ray screen with two skeletons. They were kissing, hugging, and dancing, and they were basically the same, except for maybe their size and height. And many of the onlookers were confused by this. What was the point? Until the skeletons stepped out from behind the screen, re revealing two women in a relationship. This continued to happen with people of varying genders, races, religions, ages, and the point was clear. After every couple, a message was shown including, love has no color, love has no age, love has no disability, love has no religion, and love has no gender. A woman may love their mother or their sister, yet once she loves and is attracted to another woman, then it becomes unacceptable. Or a man might have more pigment in his skin, just like any other person might have more hair on their head, yet suddenly his rights, whether civil or social, are lesser. And I know there are laws in many countries all over the world and there is equality, but there is still some sort of oppression and stigma around being different. This realization was yet another step on my journey to realizing what change I wanted to see in the world. And I sincerely hope that one day laws will change and there will be equality for everyone all over the world. But that's not where the battle ends. Last summer at my summer camp, I had a counselor who told me about one of her high school English teachers who was bisexual. And she talked about how there is no rigid system where you are either gay or you're straight. Instead, there is a spectrum from gay to straight and everybody has a spot on the spectrum. And this was an interesting idea that got me thinking about our society today and how even if you are in the middle of this spectrum, this system that provided a previously unheard of fluidity still placed a label on your head, bisexual. So even when humanity moves past this really childish phase of difference and prejudice, there will be this spectrum and with this spectrum will come labels. And however innovative, and it does sound innovative, the idea of a spectrum is now, it's really just a slightly less corrupt form of categorizing and judging. Everyone will be placed on some sort of spectrum, whether it is gender or racial, and after all this, the very judgment that humanity would have tried to abolish will still be present, just in a different form. And this, more than anything, taught me a lesson about what it truly means to be labeled in society. When you think about it, if humanity had never invented the idea of labeling people based on their background or the content of their emotions, so many tragedies and conflicts could have been avoided. So, for example, the Holocaust. If we had never borne up the idea of judging someone based on their background, there would have never been a need to have a major difference between Jewish people and German people and the deaths of over six million people could have been avoided. This may not come as a shock, but one of the worst problems of all of these is the internet. And I'm not just talking about the mean and utterly evil things that people say behind the protection of a screen, but also the way that they stand against it. I'm sure a lot of you have seen those quotes on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter that say, be yourself, or you're perfect just the way you are. And that's true, and it's great that people have the courage to post those on a platform that can be really judgmental at times. It's just that a lot of the time, unfortunately, what it really means is be yourself, but not like that. What I mean by this is even in a society like Canada's, where everybody is equal and everybody is free to love who they love, there's still this constant pressure to conform to this box of normality. And I know that we live in a society where the struggle for equality is lesser and lesser every day, but that is the perfect representation of what my point is. The challenges won't end when the laws change. The challenges will end when the attitudes change. So my purpose stands and will not change until there is no fear 
no labels, no oppression, no stigma, no judgment. And now I, Ben Trogget, stand before you living with and for a purpose. But more importantly, I stand before you as a person free of labels. Thank you.